in this recording, I'm going to go through some of the initial steps on how to how to approach this worksheet I came up with, where students should be able to resolve for components of vectors. Um, just to prepare students for a future lesson, I haven't put together vectors graphically and try to set them up for success. Then looking at a picture, they should be able to come up with one component of something like this, just graphically, it's much easier, easier than, than verbally. And then lastly, we get to something like this where they should be able to find the north component of a verbal expression of that vector. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and just hit some preliminary information that you should have just to make sure that you're there so you understand the rest of this video. The hypotenuse is always the largest side of a triangle. And in here, the, you don't know what the opposite is until you have an angle. So this angle is very important because that opens up to what we would call the opposite side. So that's, that's something you need to know. So this opens up to this side. So this is the opposite side. So depending on the angle of interest, the opposite is going to be right across from it. And then the last thing you, we have is adjacent just sitting right off the side. And then some of the math in this uh, in this worksheet you need to be able to do is you're going to have to solve for the opposite using Sokotoa. You're going to have to solve for the adjacent using Sokotoa. So let's just look at how to take this, which is on our equation sheet. You may not be as lucky to have an equation sheet, um, but on our equation sheet we have it just like this, but you need to solve for, hypo, for the op opposite or the adjacent in this worksheet. And therefore, to get op the opposite isolated, it's in the numerator. So if I get rid of the hypotenuse, I'm left with opposite, and that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by the hypotenuse, getting rid of the hypotenuse. And I'm left with opposite equals sine of the angle times the hypotenuse. And same thing, same mathematically, completely the same. I want to get rid of the hypotenuse, the adjacent in the numerator. All I have to do is multiply the hypotenuse out. That cancels out the hypotenuse. I'm left with the just adjacent, and I just like to write it with adjacent on the left side. Um, adjacent equals cosine angle times the hypotenuse. And mathematically, it's the same thing. If you wrote hypotenuse times cosine angle, it's the same thing. And then in the next lesson, we're going to go ahead and solve for the angle, but we'll work on that then. Okay, so here's an example of, um, of how to do this problem. The first problem, um, best practices is to draw an origin dot. And it doesn't really matter which one of these I do first, but for the sake of following me and my students to check their work with my work, uh, we're going to just go ahead and put the first vector in. So if you go 10 meters north, and then you follow that up, it's a direction scheme. You always have to add vectors head to tail. So this tail needs to be at the end of this head right here. So we're going to go ahead and draw it just in just like that. Uh, I like to say just don't leave the paper when you draw this triangle or this, or this arrow, don't leave the paper. You're right here and then look at the next direction and just keep on going from there. And then finally, this last part's not head to tail. The last part, which is called resultant, is what you can do instead. So go back to the origin dot and throw in that arrow. And then lastly, I tell you, put the symbol where the origin dot is. And now you're set up for one of my next lessons when I, when I make a new worksheet for my class to get a little practice at um, finding, putting together components. Okay, just more practice at that, more practice. Uh, this one's interesting. I just want to make sure my students don't forget. 1D motion is actually easier. You can do the same thing, 2 meters per second. And then 5 meters per second squared. Once again, I have different units all the time just to, to note that the vectors, if they're vectors like acceleration, they still can be done this way. You can add them together. And the overall resultant would be just the whole, which would be 7 meters per second squared. And then second step, um, before you know, knowing how to um, do the directions, which I have in a previous video, um, setting it up, setting them up, I set up a triangle for the students. But I ask you just to, you know, best practices, draw an origin dot. And if I'm going to go here directly, this is the resultant. What could I do instead if I want to take two steps? And I can go up. So these lines right here represent areas where I want you to draw the vector triangle, the components. And I would go north, and then I would go east, and then I'd end up over here, which is 60 degrees east of north, which I, once again, mentioned on how to do that, the direction scheme on a previous video. Okay, and then after, at this point in time, you have the hypotenuse labeled sides. 15 is a hypotenuse, and 60 opens up to the opposite, and then the adjacent's over here, but you have to look at the question here. I want the north component. And if you drew triangles along your lines, you're going to have only one arrow that faces directly up. And if you look at that 60 degrees, I'm not interested in the opposite, which would be over here. I'm interested in the adjacent. 
And then you go to Sokotoa and you have adjacent and you've got your hypotenuse. And that's going to lead you to the, the cosine of the angle equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And I showed you how to rearrange that before. It's going to become adjacent equals cosine. I'm going to go ahead and throw in the 60 degrees times the hypotenuse, which was 15. And when you solve for that, your answer is going to be 7.5 meters and then north. This is important. You're no longer going in this angle over here. I'm just, I resolved it for only the north component. So that's, that's the overall answer here. Okay, more practice, more practice, more practice. And then we finally get to these problems where you now have wording. So from my previous lesson, I described why we do this, but just an easy way around drawing the vector when you have it written like this is to draw an origin dot and then step it backwards. If you go east first, and then you go north, north is the next thing I see. Go north next, and then you have an angle here, but in order to draw the angle, you need to fill in the resultant. You need to have a triangle to throw that angle in. So you place the resultant, throw the 20 degrees right there at the origin dot, reason why we have the origin dot. And then this is going to be left off on the hypotenuse. This will always be the hypotenuse if it's next to some sort of angle and some sort of description of that angle. So now we want to find the north component. So we look at this and we just determine that the north arrow, the arrow facing north is right across. And this is the opposite. So this is the opposite and this is the hypotenuse. We're going to go ahead and go to sine and opposite. So skipping the step that I did earlier, opposite equals sine of 20 degrees times the hypotenuse which is 450 and when you get your answer here the answer is 153.9 meters and it's north and so there's your answer hopefully that helps you out in, in getting started on this worksheet uh, and, and good luck Ooh.